story. Um, I, Lindsay uh, uh, transplanted her uh, friend Miyuki and she's gonna tell us that story. And, um, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it was the week after I got out of the hospital my dad and my stepmom, Heather, had come down from Oregon to take care of me. One of the small incisions on my stomach came open. And I was a little concerned, but also not interested at all in going back to the hospital. Uh, so with my stepmom being a nurse and with some glue from an EMT friend, we chose to handle it ourselves. What could go wrong? Have you ever used super glue in a small space? <laughs> Have you ever accidentally glued something to yourself? <laughs> Have you ever asked, how long does this take to dry? Which is literally what I said the moment we realized that her fingers were glued to my stomach. <laughs> so this is hilarious and yet not my idea of family bonding. <laughs> My name is Lindsay O'Neill, and I live here in Redlands, and I'm a personal coach, and my coaching practice is Coaching Life Alchemy, and I get to participate in a different way in renewing lives. Back in 2012, I donated a kidney to my friend Miyuki, and at the time, we were both employees here at the Medical Center. I'm honored to be chosen to speak here today, and I'm also very honored to have donated my kidney. So as the theme for today is give life, renew life, I feel that most people assume that the recipient is the one whose life is changed by a transplant. And I wanna share with you how donating renewed my life. Let me tell you a little story about how everything happened. I met Miyuki first back in 2008. Um, we were both participating in a life transformational training called WorldWorks. Fast forward four years later, we were still friends, and she was really sick. First of all, I never dreamed we would actually match. She had been through so many people testing and, and had created no result. I distinctly remember sitting out front, in front of the medical center, sitting on a bench, and we were both on our lunch break. And we were talking, and I would asked her, how is everything going? And I remember her head was down and she was so discouraged. And I turned and looked at her and said, look, like there must still be a possibility. You can't give up. I haven't gotten tested yet. And I represent all the people you just haven't thought of yet. So I got tested and then we matched. And then I got to confront a massive gap within myself. I always thought that I was a pretty good person, that I would go out of my way for another human, and yet this assumption had never really been challenged. I realized that I was not yet the person that it would require to deliver on this <coughs> transplant, and I knew I wanted to donate. I got to completely reinvent myself to authentically be courageous, giving, and trusting of the process. It was and is really important to me to be congruent within myself, meaning my thoughts match my actions, match my feelings, that everything lines up. So I got to really dive into self-growth and call forth a version of me that would truly give a piece of myself to someone else. I got to become the person that would donate a kidney. So through the process, I learned a lot. Like I'm really healthy. <laughs> I also secretly hope that my kidney weighed at least 10 pounds, so after the surgery I'd be like magically 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> but that was really disappointing. <laughs> so here are three lessons that I learned that, um, that I still live in my life and that I get to coach people on and that I wanna share with you. Number one, if I hear the call, it is mine to answer. When there's a possibility, an opportunity, 
when there's a request put out to be accepted, if I'm the one hearing it, it is for me. So lean into those openings and trust that they are purposeful. <clears throat> Number two, we belong to each other. Shifting my perspective from seeing anything outside of me as separate to that we are one. When we are all connected, it becomes easy to give and share and receive. When I look at the universe, I see everything has its place and a contribution. The stars, the trees, the ocean, people, animals. It's one big, great dance. We're all important and we belong to each other. From this perspective, healing another is healing myself. And number three, show up. There's no substitute for physically showing up and being present for what I say matters to me. So yes, I showed up for Miyuki, and through that, I got to experience all the people that show up for me. I was really, really scared to have surgery and feel pain. I'd never had a surgery. I, like a hangnail, splinters were about the max I'd experienced. Um, so I was really nervous about it. And I, I didn't know how I would get through recovery, how I, everything would work out. And while I was in the hospital, I had dozens of visitors. It was like uh, that old TV show where like, this is your life when everybody comes, comes out of the, world, the woodworks and you get to see people. It felt like that. Um, you could, I had so many flowers in my room, you could literally smell my garden, as my nurses called it, from the elevator on 8300. <laughs> Um, my friends and family were by my side for weeks and weeks taking care of me. My spiritual family, Fellowship of the King, um, they brought food to my house every day. Enough, really every day was enough for a week for me and my family and anybody who came to my home. I was given so many gifts, books, movies, balloons, games, even a life-size Justin Bieber cardboard cutout to keep me company in the hospital room. So when you look at photos from my hospital stay, it kind of looks like Justin Bieber came to visit me because he's like standing there in the corner the whole time, not moving. <laughs> so in showing up for Miyuki, I was humbled to experience how love really showed up for me. So I got this as a gift before my surgery, and I had it in my hospital room. And when my guests would come visit, so many of them would completely freak out, like, was that what your kidney was in? Is it in there right now? And it really revealed how little they knew about transplants. <laughs> but it was one of my highlights of the stay to see people get really uncomfortable around this uh, lunchbox cooler. <laughs> so I'll leave you with this. Sometimes the choices we have may seem like we're going to lose something, but we're not. I believe God gave us two kidneys to teach us to share. For me, by choosing to give and donate, I gained the best gifts, and my life was renewed. My name is Lindsay O'Neill, and I'm a proud member of the One Kidney Club. Thank you. <laughs>